In this session, we want to discuss DHCP integration with dynamic DNS and also DHCP name protection. There are two ways that we can update our DNS server. One way is for the DHCP client to tell the DNS server its address. Another way is for the DHCP server to tell the DNS server when it registers a new client. Now, if we want these updates to take place, we need to configure the DNS server to use dynamic DNS. And we can make this change in two ways. We can make this change at the DHCP scope level. And if we do that, the change will only apply to the particular scope. Or we can make the change at the server level. That means that that change will apply to all scopes and super scopes served by the particular server. Let's take a look at how we would do that. We're going to access our DHCP. We're going to click on DHCP. We're going to expand the domain, expand IP4. And we have a choice here of doing the configuration on the scope or on the server itself. If we do the configuration on the scope, it means that we are configuring for only the particular scope. If we configure at the server level, it means that we're configuring for all the scopes on the server. Which of the two options you choose will depend on how widely you want to support dynamic DNS. Most sites enable DNS at the server level so that the configuration will apply to all the scopes in that particular server. To update the settings at the server level, we want to simply right click on IP version 4 and click on properties. Then we want to click on the DNS tab. And the very first thing that we see here is that we have enable DNS dynamic updates according to the settings below. That is ticked off. So that's there by default. The checkbox controls whether the DHCP server will attempt to register lease information with a DNS server. And if you want to have dynamic DNS enable, that tick has to be there. We have some other options here. Dynamically update DNS records only if requested by the DHCP client. Always dynamically update DNS records. The second option here, always dynamically update DNS records. That button forces the DHCP server to register any client to which it issues a lease. The first button, dynamically update DNS records only if requested by the DHCP client. That tells the DHCP server to register the update only if the DHCP client asks for DNS registration. Then we have the option here, discard A and PTR records when the lease is deleted. And that checkbox has a very simple function. When the DHCP lease expires, it says what should happen to the DNS registration. You also have an option here, 
dynamically update DNS A and PTR records for DHCP clients that do not request updates. That checkbox lets you handle all the clients by making the updates using a separate mechanism. And we also have Disable dynamic updates for DNS PTR records. Remember, if you want to have the DNS registration, if you want DNS to dynamically update, you must have this tick here, enable DNS dynamic registration. In this setting, we can also configure name protection. You see here at the bottom of the dialog box, name protection we want to click on configure to configure name protection you can see that this is enabled by default so we can either enable or disable it um, name protection with name protection the DHCP server registers records on behalf of the client only if no other client with this DNS information is already registered. Very simple, if we want to enable or disable name protection, you simply click on configure as we did just now, and you will simply clear the enable name protection if you don't want name protection, and that as simple as that. You can look at the description here. Enforcing name protection will result in the following behavioral changes. DHCP server honors request for A and PTR records registration for Windows DHCP clients. DHCP server dynamically updates A and PTR records for non-Windows DHCP clients. DHCP server discards A and PTR records when lease is deleted. So we're going to click on OK. We're going to click on OK again to come out of the property box. Remember, we can also do the DNS registration setting at the scope level. The difference being that you'll be only configuring DNS registration for a particular scope. This is the end of our session on DNS registration and DACP name protection. I want to thank you for listening.